This is the beautiful trench dug by Mr. Antonio. There he is. So that's a good 21, at least 21 inches deep. It's all the way there. He didn't even tear up my French drains. He's an amazing digger. So this is a momentous occasion here at the uh, at the farmhouse solar project. Antonio just dug in the conduits to feed this barn. So this is a continuation of the solar and this will be the battery backup setup. I'll have my battery system in this barn. And Antonio just hand dug a 60 foot long, 21 inch deep pipe, deep trench. So the minimum fill requirement is something that a lot of people ask about. How deep do you dare bury the pipe? And um, we're going to be bringing in fill dirt right there. So we're not as deep in that area. So you can see where the grade is. We've got to bring that back in. But um, I'm going to cut now to the NEC minimum fill requirements and show you guys how to figure out how deep you need to bury your conduits and your electrical wires. Okay, guys, so here we go with our minimum cover requirements as it relates to code. I'm just going to search table 300.5 of the NEC and go to images. And if I get into some, try not to get into some copyrighted stuff, but um, if I do, I'll cite it. So here is our table 300.5 out of the NEC, and this is where you're getting those 18, 24. 12 inches, 6 inches. This is uh, right out of the code, and uh, this is a document by a local government in California. But um, this is usually where we hang out, is in the um, non-metallic raceways listed for direct burial without concrete. And then um, sometimes we'll hang out in the direct burial category. But here we go with 18 inches. This is under uh, a slab with no vehicular traffic. That can apply to us sometimes. Under streets, highways, you get into 24. So when you start going under roads and stuff, you want to be 24 inches. One and two family dwellings, driveways, and outdoor parking areas that are only used for the residential. So that's where you can do 18 inches. Now it's never going to hurt to go deeper. Uh, and then, all, of course, all locations not specified, 24 inches. So 24 inches is kind of the max here. Um, 18 inches is, is kind of the minimum. And um, it just depends on if you know you've got a huge machine and you're going to be driving around on top of this conduit, you might want to go for 24 inches. Otherwise, it's 18. And let's just keep in mind that uh, this is to the top of the pipe or the raceway, that distance that they're mandating. Then there's that low voltage requirement right there, six inches. This is control irrigation landscape, not more than 30 volts. So if you're low voltage, you don't have to bury it as deep. Let me show you. I am going to just show you real quick. This is from Mike Holt stuff and a great resource. He's put out so much information. Ooh, this is a big document. I don't know if I can pull it up here. But um, there's a good picture right there. So if you guys see this picture, He's showing you what 18 inches to the top of the pipe means. That's a really good illustration from Mike Holt. And uh, I really encourage anybody that's trying to get their electrical license. I bought his whole collection when I was studying for my test last year. So that's a uh, great illustration. There's not a lot of pictures in the code, so if you like pictures. So I hope this helps you guys understand the requirements for how you're doing your trench. And um, we'll go back to the video now. Talk a little bit now about what type of conduit we're using. We are using. So I'm using two inch Schedule 40 rigid PVC conduit. And uh, this is the gray stuff. It's not white. It has belled ends, which you can get water pipe with belled ends. But uh, this is uh, electrical conduit. This is what we use in the, in the States. You can also get a schedule 80 and I believe you can get a schedule 120 and that has to do with the thickness of the wall of the pipe but this stuff is plenty 
plenty beefy for what we're going to be doing. We're going to be pulling wires through it. So when you run your conduits, just be, be mindful of which direction the bells are facing. You want your bells, if this makes any sense, you want your bells running downhill. So as you pull a wire, the idea is that you would pull from with gravity so when a wire goes through there it'll slide against the bell end instead of going that way uh, we always bury almost always bury a two inch pipe because why would you bury smaller i've actually got a song about it but they don't want me to sing it but we always do it too they call me two inch johnny yes i do yes i do they call me two inch johnny because i always run a two why go to the trouble put a pipe too small you might as well not run a pipe at all isn't that right you don't care. guys there's also a table that's going to tell you your conduit sizes what size conduits to run based on how many wires you're going to have in those conduits I'm not going to show you that one. I might show you in a later video, but just for the most part, I want you to realize that you always bury two. Twanging a little bit there. They call me two inch Johnny because I always run a two. Just bury two inch. And you won't have to worry about all those other sizes. I don't even know why they make other size conduits. Should just all be two inch. When you bury PVC, like a stick of two inch right now, Costs about seven dollars and seventy-seven cents, or somewhere around in that neighborhood. And you know, one inch is maybe four dollars. So why go to the trouble of burying too small of a pipe? Just the other day, I got called out. This fellow wanted solar on his chicken house. I saw number four copper in a one-inch pipe. I said, "Son, that pipe looks a little bit tight. Why go to the trouble? Put a pipe too small. You might as well have not buried pipe at all." They call me two-inch Johnny. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They call me two-inch Johnny because I always run a two. They call me two-inch Johnny because I always run a two. They call me two-inch Johnny. Yes, they do. Yes, they do.